In order for users to feel immersed in a virtual environment when they use virtual or augmented reality, it is important that the perceptual information they receive matches the virtual content shown to them. For example, when the user rotates their head, the virtual content should move accordingly. The more accurately the user's senses match with the virtual environment, the more immersed the user will feel. Haptic feedback allows us to simulate the sensation of touching nearby virtual objects. In the case of active haptics, the haptic forces are usually rendered with some kind of mechanical robot. Many researchers have studied how different robots can be used to render different types of haptic forces, showing the benefits of haptic feedback for improving the user's immersion in the virtual experience. However, much of this prior work only looks at situations where the haptic forces are rendered when the user initiates an interaction with the virtual environment. Conversely, we look at the situation where the haptic forces initiate an interaction for the user. In this work, we looked at how haptic feedback can be used to influence the user's behavior in an environment, with the goal of improving their safety and immersion in the virtual experience. We refer to this as active haptic guidance. Active haptic guidance is a very general concept. It can refer to any haptic force that aims to alter the user's behavior. We identified two main constraints that need to be fulfilled when implementing active haptic guidance. First is the influential haptics constraint, which simply means that the haptic forces that are rendered need to be realistic enough that the user actually feels compelled to change their behavior in accordance with the haptic forces. If the haptic forces do not match with what the user perceives in the virtual world, or if the haptic forces are not realistic, it is possible that the user may ignore the haptic forces and we will fail to influence their behavior. Fulfilling this constraint largely depends on the mechanics of the haptic proxy and the virtual interaction. The second constraint is the relative co-location constraint. When using haptics in mixed reality, positions of the haptic proxy and the associated virtual object need to be the same, relative to the user's position. This is done to ensure that the haptic forces align with the virtual object that is meant to exert these forces, which helps to make the experience feel more realistic. Failure to meet this constraint can result in a break in presence where the user is not immersed in the virtual environment. In practice, fulfilling this constraint requires that the position of the haptic proxy is constantly updated in order to match the relative position of the virtual object. To show how active haptic guidance can be used to improve the user experience, we applied this technique to a virtual reality navigation task. In our task, the user had to walk to a goal location in the virtual world. In the virtual reality environment, they had a virtual companion represented as a puppy. At the same time, the user was tethered to a real robot in the physical space. The robot was capable of doing several different kinds of movements. It could follow the user in straight line paths as they moved around. It could follow the user on curved paths as they moved around. Finally, it could tug on the leash to lead the user away from the boundaries of the physical space. The combination of the virtual companion dog running away and the tugging on the physical tether from the robot proxy encouraged the user to follow the robot back towards the center of the physical space. This helped to prevent users from bumping into physical objects that they could not see during the virtual experience. Here's a quick demo of this in action. To measure the efficacy of our active haptic guidance, we conducted a user study where one group of participants completed the navigation task with the haptic proxy and the other group completed the task without any haptic feedback. To measure participants' performance at the task, we recorded the number of times that they reached the boundary of the tracked space and had to turn around, which we call a break in presence, the time taken to finish the task, the participants' subjective feelings of presence in the environment, and the number of participants who reached the goal destination within the experiment time limit. 
our results showed that across all performance metrics, the participants who had the haptic proxy performed better than the participants who did not have the proxy. These results support the notion that haptics can be effectively used to influence the user's behavior and guide them through a virtual experience to both improve their safety and improve their immersion in the experience. We hope that future work can investigate new ways to apply active haptic guidance to other types of virtual experiences, such as social mixed reality settings with multiple users. If you would like to learn more about this project, you can find the full paper with all the details at the project page below, or you can send me an email with any questions you have. Thank you for watching.